morning, everybody. Doors closed. Uh, welcome to the Board of Mayor and Alderman meeting for Tuesday, April 11th, 2023. Um, we're going to start out with a roll call. Vice Mayor? Here. Alderman Blanton? Here. Alderman Hansen? Here. Alderman Peterson? Here. Alderman Berger? Present. Alderman Brown? Here. Alderman Potts? Present. Alderman Baggett? Present. And the mayor's here also. We have full attendance. I'm going to ask uh, Vice Mayor if he would offer an invocation, and then I'll lead the Pledge of Allegiance, if you'd please stand. Would you, would you bow, please? Heavenly Father, we come to you in prayer tonight. Thank you for this great nation that we live in. We know that we are truly, truly a blessed nation with all the freedoms that we have. We know that these freedoms come through you. We give you thanks for these freedoms. We also give you thanks for or ask your blessings upon those who, who care for our freedoms, whether they be first responders, whether they be the military fighting in foreign countries. We ask that you be with them. We know that many times it is a hardship on the families. We also ask your blessings upon a fireman to this afternoon who was injured in an accident. He is uh, in recovery right now. We ask your blessings upon him also. We also ask that you be with each of us as members of the board of Mayor and Alderman. Give us spiritual wisdom and guidance. Christ's name we pray, amen. 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 Join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. may be seated. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is for items, uh, for citizen comments for items on, not on the agenda. I have no speaker cards for that, and we'll continue to move through. Uh, at one time, we did have some uh, county commissioners with us. If they're here, we want to recognize them and welcome them to our meeting. I have no communications for the Williamson County Commission. Uh, we'll next go on to uh, uh, minutes from March the 28th, 2023 work session and Board of Mayor and Alderman meeting, and I'll entertain a motion. Move for approval. Second. Thank, uh, thank you, Alderman Potts, for the second. Any discussion? Ready to vote. Vice Mayor? Yes. Alderman Blanton? Yes. Alderman Hansen? Yes. Alderman Peterson? Yes. Alderman Berger? Yes. Alderman Brown? Yes. Alderman Potts? Yes. Alderman Baggett? Yes. It passes unanimously. We'll now move on to recognition, and we're going to begin with a proclamation for Municipal Clerks Week. And I would ask Angie, our municipal clerk, to come up. Can I say something before you read it? Absolutely. Okay, for those of you who can't get into Civic <laughs> Clerk right now, go to the city website and go to Agendas and Minutes, and you'll be able to get to everything that way. Okay. I just did my job. She's doing her job. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'm speechless after that. But anyway, that's what you do all day. I'm going to start reading the proclamation now. Whereas the Office of the Professional Municipal Clerk, a time-honored and vital part of its local government, exists throughout the world and is the oldest among public servants. And whereas the Office of the Professional Municipal Clerk provides the professional link between the citizens, the local governing body, and the agencies of government at other levels. And whereas municipal clerks uh, professional municipal clerks have pledged to be ever mindful of their neutrality and impartiality, rendering equal service to all, and whereas the professional municipal clerk serves as the information center on functions of local government and community, and whereas professional municipal clerks continually strive to improve the administration of the affairs of the office professional municipal clerk through participation in education programs, seminars, workshops, annual meetings of their state, provincial, county, and international professional organizations, and whereas it is most appropriate that we recognize the accomplishments of the Office of the Professional Municipal Clerk. Now, therefore, I, Dr. Ken Moore, Mayor of the City of Franklin, do hereby proclaim April 30th through May 6th, Professional Municipal Clerks Week in the City of Franklin and extend appreciation to our professional municipal clerk recorders for the vital services they perform and their exemplary dedication to the communities they represent. Thank you. Wow, that's a <laughs> Now I'd like to invite uh, 
folks up from Williamson County Association of Realtors who are here for a proclamation about fair housing. Golly, I didn't realize we, no wonder we had so many people here. Wow. <laughs> good. good seeing y'all. Wow. So, uh, Whereas the city of Franklin, Tennessee actively and affirmatively promotes fair housing in its policies and practices, whereas April 23rd marks the 55th year of the 1968 Fair Housing Act, which strives to ensure equal housing opportunity for all. The law prohibits discrimination based on race, color, creed, national origin, sex, familiar status, familial status, or handicap and applies to homeowners, landlords, mortgage lenders, and appraisers. Whereas for many families, home ownership is a stepping stone to prosperity and represents the American way of life, fair housing means opening these doors for everyone in the country whose goal is to own a home. Whereas fair housing is, an integral, is integral to the ethical commitment of members of the National Association of Realtors and the Williamson County Association of Realtors and is critical to the ability of all real estate professionals to serve their clients, customers, and communities. And whereas acts of housing discrimination and barriers to equal housing opportunity are repugnant to a common sense of decency and fairness. And whereas the Board of Mayor and Alderman hereby designates April as Fair Housing Month in the city of Franklin, Tennessee, and reaffirms its commitment to combating unlawful housing discrimination and encouraging the development of balanced residential living patterns and now, therefore, be it proclaimed on this day, April the 11th, 2023, the Board of Mayor and Aldermen and Aldermen of the City of Franklin do hereby recognize and claim our dedication to the principles guaranteed under the Fair Housing Act for the existing residents and future generations. if I could, just to add to our schedule of events that's on the agenda. This Thursday evening at 6 o'clock, there's a special session related to our update of our Envision Franklin land use plan. And this is a virtual meeting. So it's, it's online. It's a Zoom platform meeting. Starts at 6 o'clock, and it deals with housing as it relates to the land use plan and the, the ongoing work to update the land use plan. So just go to our website, franklintn.gov, and you can go to the calendar for that day and find the link and the information to participate in that public meeting, that virtual public meeting. Thank you. Okay. Any other miscellaneous reports or announcements? Seeing none, we'll go on to the consent agenda. All items under the consent agenda are deemed to be non-controversial and routine in nature by the governing body. They will be approved as recommended by committee or staff by one motion of the governing body. The items on the consent agenda will not be discussed. Tonight, we're considering items number 11 through 23. I gotta have a breather here a second. Yeah, look at that. Is there a motion? Second. Thank you, Alderman <laughs> Blanton. Second of Alderman Brown. Any discussion? Ready to vote? Vice Mayor Barnhill. Yes. Alderman Blanton. Yes. Alderman Hanson. Yes. Alderman Peterson. Yes. Alderman Berger. Yes. Alderman Brown. Yes. Alderman Potts. Yes. Alderman Baggett. Yes. Passes unanimously. <clears throat> we'll now go to item number five, which is consideration of resolution 2023-25, a resolution adopting a community decency policy. Is there a motion? I move for approval. Appropriate motion. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Alderman Baggett. 
Alderman Berger. All right, I brought this forward just to clarify some things, and it actually is the same thing as state law. Everything that's included in here is state law. So there's nothing different in here that we're um, uh, talking about. It just puts us our policy under um, citing individuals uh, or citing breaches of um, law here and policy for the city. It gives the police officers the ability to cite them under state law and state penalties. Uh, rather than sending them to city court where there's only a $50 fine, a slap on the hand, and you can come back as many times as you like for $50. And under state law, it gives a little bit more hefty penalty. And um, so it's no nothing different in here than with state law. Shauna, is there anything that you would like to add to that? We worked on it together. And, yeah. Right. That's the only thing. Correct says, uh, yes, so in other words, you know, it gives us the opportunity to say um, to any group and, and people using our special event permits would be any, anyone that's ever applied for our permits and going to apply for our permits in the future, actually. So uh, we give them a, a two-year off period if there's a violation. And um, then the penalties would be... Um, according to state law. And that's the only thing. Thank you. Alderman Plant. Patrick, I don't want to jump ahead of you. Did you want to say anything? Um, section 5 is actually probably what I have issue with. Um, for those of you who can't see it, it says any group, nonprofit organization, school, or organized group or gathering of a group of people using public spaces free of charge or by paid use who violate this policy will be banned from using public city spaces for two years before being allowed to submit subsequent applications for use of any public space. Um, part B, group penalties, any group, nonprofit organization, school, or organized group or gathering of a group of people using public spaces free of charge or by paid use will be cited and prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. So. I understand the intent here, but I think that, um, to quote Dana, the unintended consequences of this type of penalty, when you're dealing with a group of people, and we're not going to talk about Pride Festival because I think that's where everybody's head's going. Um, it deals with everyone. Mm -hmm. Sure. Let's talk Main Street Festival. Absolutely. Um, if Susie Q comes with her family and she's at the beer tent and she has a little bit too much to drink and she becomes uninhibited and decides to, I don't know, I'm trying to think of something, we'll take her shirt off. We're at Mardi Gras in her mind. For the Heritage Foundation to be the one that carries the burden of losing that they permit yeah. does not punish the person <laughs> who chose the action. Mm -hmm. And the way this reads, the organizer or the host of the event is the one that pays the penalty, not the person who committed the act. And I don't think that that mm -hmm. is a great, I guess, chain of command. I think that um, we're gonna have a lot of people who are anxious about this policy and the forfeit use becoming um, the police of our community. And I think that we have a really strong police department I think when an organizer hosts an event, if they see a problem, they feel very comfortable in picking up the phone and reaching out to our law enforcement mm -hmm. to say, we need you to come intercede. And that situation is dealt with. I think we've got to be careful about, as mm -hmm. I say, the unintended consequences of the way this is written, of how it could hurt any of our Absolutely. community festivals or events, whether mm -hmm. it's in public paced places, free or paid. The other thing that I will say, and we all are here today to vote on something annually, we look at every event that has a special permit. Um, and we can, as we will tonight, decide whether that's granted or not granted based on the previous year. So I can't support this um, because of the penalties. And I think that the state policy, um, as I've been told, has more teeth than our own. Mm -hmm. and supersedes our 
ordinances, so I won't be supporting this as written unless that is taken out of it. Mr. Mayor, may I speak to that? Uh, Shauna, can you speak to that? Because we've talked about that exact same thing, because that was my concern as well, and I'd like for you to speak legally to that as well. We can certainly make it stronger if that's what you like to say that event goers um, that I, are. I had asked us to do that originally, and you told me it was necessary. So, well, it, because just, what it says is group, nonprofit organization, school, mm -hmm. organized group, or gathering of a group of people. Um, but we can certainly make it m more clear that event goers and people who aren't the actual applicant. Uh, their their activities won't be held against the um, the event um, organizers because you you really can't control somebody that might walk through no, Main Street absolutely. Festival during the Main Street um, event Correct. and then you know what they might or might not do. That's what we talked about. That right. was my concern. Exactly what Brandy's brought up. And uh, well, then why was it written this way? Well, I'd like to know that too because I asked yeah. about us maybe. Being clear, and you said the individuals would not necessarily have to be held yeah, it responsible. Yeah, it doesn't say individuals. Um, so that, how do we how do we make that clear? Because the I'm with I'm individual isn't renting the space, Beth. I'm with Brandy on this. An individual, like she gave that example, and if that would happen, that person needs to be held responsible. And the Heritage Foundation or whoever has had the Lions no, Club to or, the Heritage Foundation. I was trying to or, think or the Lions Club, whoever had the the event downtown, the July 4th event, um, any any organization should not be held responsible for some individual's behavior. Of So that's what I had originally asked about. Yeah, we can add a sentence into paragraph A that says, um, you know, the organizer shall not be responsible for any actions of um, event goers. Well, well then what um, is the two years and sub- the pot, the because the applications for any use of public space, this whole thing is negated if it's directed towards the individual. And in my idea, we don't need this, we've got the state law that supersedes this. But we don't, so if the intent was it. to release somebody from their permit for two years, and we're saying they shouldn't be held liable for an individual um, attendee, then I don't see why it needs to be put in place at all, Mayor. Go ahead, Alderman Bagger. Maybe, um, and I, I, I agree that we need to take some of the ambiguity out, but possibly you would change Section 5 A and B, uh, or at least add some language that saying that the frequent, you know, if, if uh, the frequency of these types of um, infractions could be used by the Board of Mayor and Alderman in subsequent review and these, you know what I mean? Because we don't want, I think if you remove the penalty on the group, mm -hmm. and they just they just say, hey, you know what? Not us. That's mm -hmm. individuals. Yeah. And then you yeah. know you. Ha so I think we should have the language in there that that gives up that tells the sets expectations with the with the petitioner that, hey, you know what? Like if if there's a if this becomes a regular thing or if this is a regular thing at your events and you're not you know that w that we can take that into account in administering the penalty. I think. We don't want the penalty to be automatic on the group or the organizer, but we want the ability to be able to take in those individual infractions into account. It, it, and, and we're not, listen, we can talk about them and, it, and they'll be cited, so we'll have citations per this ordinance that we can say, you know, there's five citations here. So the group should probably have some sort of two-year hiatus or there's one crazy who just you know decided to you know strut down the street or whatever and main street festival and you know that's not the group's problem and we're not going to take that into account right and so however you could i just sell insurance so the <laughs> lawyers can um, right. can craft that yeah. and <laughs> i mean that's what i would say i think the spirit of this is that we don't want the groups held liable for that's right for one-offs but we also want a little bit of teeth if there mm -hmm. are a frequency issue. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, Shauna, may I uh, address you? Uh, mm -hmm. Do you feel comfortable in, a, in amending, for us amend, amending this this evening, or do we need a little work on this to bring it back in two weeks? 
not that this is the resolution. So I'm perfectly fine with that if you want to. Or it, can you clean that up as we speak tonight? Because I think the legalese needs to come from you. Yeah, and I'd like to make sure we're clear about, like sometimes it's a, some events are not open to the public. So that's maybe an that's event right. goer versus like Main Street Festival that we don't close the streets. So right. someone right. might just be going to a that's restaurant right. and maybe they do mm -hmm. something and they're not actually an event goer. They're just a passerby. So you, the terms and the words are, I don't want to get you guys in a, in a situation where you, you're approving something on the fly I, without having seen it written. I would, I would feel comfortable. So I would make a motion um, that we defer this to, um, to clean up the language and bring it back to the board um, till April, what is the date in the? 25th. 25th, thank you, Ms. Mayor. To April 25th, uh, so we can clean up the language and bring it back to us so we're all satisfied with that. Mr. Mayor, oh, go ahead. So is there a second? That, that's my motion. I'll second it. <laughs> okay. Do you want to speak uh, to it again, or you want, may I recognize mm -hmm. Alderman Baggett? I'm I don't want us to use this deferral right. as a crutch no. or a kick the can down Agreed. the road on the next item that's coming up. We've already done that two weeks now. Thank you. Thank you. Not going. Not going to do it. Amen. Not going to Amen. Do it anymore. Amen. If this is not accurate. We yeah. we delayed this thing mm -hmm. two weeks ago to get this right to make them both match up as much as possible and, and to also add any teeth that we needed to add right. to item six. So mm -hmm. we're not going to use this deferral mm -hmm. for two weeks as a crutch to delay item six. Amen. Amen. Alderman Bagg. <laughs> Would it be appropriate to have every alderman speak though to if this is the direction that this is going that they feel comfortable with the direction this is going or it, I mean, we're not voting on it, but I would like to understand the temperament of, of the alderman, if that is the direction that this is going to what we've just discussed, just it, it, it's in the in, in discussion. I mean, there are people who have not said anything on this, and I would be very interested to know their thoughts before well, certain votes later. Sorry. The motion to defer is is has been made, and all debate needs to be about whether or not you defer it and not about the action or the item itself. Thank you. For the That's what's on the floor right now. Thank you. Would the alderman... Um, withdraw, the withdraw the motion so that that could be discussed. Sure, I'll withdraw it. So we're back to the I'll, original motion. I right. will draw the second. Mm -hmm. So we're back to the original motion, and Alderman Baggett, you may ask the alderman if, if you I'll, like Alderman Brown. I'll go. Yeah. I, uh, Thank you. I, I have the same issue, and, I, and I'll tell mm -hmm. you, I had some great conversations um, around like pilgrimage. I mean, you open. You open a big mm -hmm. issue with this as it is right now with pilgrimage, Absolutely. and I think we could very well see that out of our city for a couple of years just just by mm -hmm. the nature of sort of holding them accountable to what could happen there. Um, I think there's even a concern from the folks from pilgrimage that you would have artists that wouldn't even want to play because this is in place, because it has it's, it's aligned to the state law. I mean, look, I don't want I don't want these things in my community either. But the problem is, it's so hard. I, I, it's it, it's almost so broad, and the penalty is so broad. I just don't know how we enfor en enforce that or how we read. It. Well, I'll tell you what starts making me a little bit nervous is when we just start talking about things like, based on, you know, particular, you know, standard. Well, who, I'm a, I'm a, as long as it follows state law, then it almost begs that we don't need it. If you lose the penalty, then it almost begs that you don't need the law yeah. or the, the, the piece. Like, I'm trying to understand, yeah. this feels like a piece of resolution right. looking for a home, and I just can't Sorry. understand it. Mr. Mayor, may I clarify that? Go ahead, why, Alderman Berger. Why I brought this forward is because our ordinances only allow us to give a slap on the hand and $50 yeah. fine. That is nothing, and we complain about that all the mm -hmm. time. It goes to our city court, slap on the hand, $50. We can do that again. Slap on the hand, $50. How many times can you come in and rotate around for $50? People do it all the time by not taking care of their yards and getting fined by our codes department. Therefore, putting it under a resolution, under policy, that it will be cited under state law, 
puts a little bit more teeth in it, and that is the reason behind it. And everything that you're reading here is state law. It's no different, but it gives the policy, gives us the policy to the, the ability to cite under state law with a little stiffer penalty, maybe $500. People are going to be thinking about that. If I have to pay five hundred dollars every time I want to, but that's a different that, holding individuals accountable. I get, and, and I think we should do that. I think we're, but we're not really doing that. What we're doing is holding organizations accountable with severe penalties, and that's so wipe out section five and write something in there that specifically says that individuals will be held accountable and that there's a, there's a greater penalty. I, I. I Sure, if there's an individual that does any of these things right here, and I, I'm all for that penalty. What's bothering me is that it's tied to groups that I think we're going to get too much down the road, and we're going to wish we never did this because no. it's going to impact events that we, in a million years, hadn't thought that actually would have an issue. Unintended consequences. Unintended yes. consequences. Well, I, Mayor, but there's no new infraction. This is not establishing a new infraction. This is no. established. This is the law exists right. now. There's no, if it, pilgrimage shouldn't worry because if they had been breaking the law before, mm -hmm. they would have been cited before under the Absolutely. state law. There's no new. Section five wasn't state law. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor. Shh. Thank you, Mayor. Um, th that's, th it's, it's just really clear. We're not adding a new, there's no new hurdle for mm -hmm. anyone. You're, no. just add, you're just adding the organizational accountability to that behavior is my That's point. Section right. 5 adds an organizational accountability to that behavior. That would you, part would is you prefer new. that we had tonight more organizational or less organizational Scrutiny. teeth tonight on the no next vote? I think there's, but there's, there's, there are situations that could arise with a variety of events where we need to have something in writing that, that there are consequences to violating state law. But no one, keep in mind, no one has been cited for one of these state laws at any event to date, including the ones we're voting on tonight. Mm -hmm. So if it did become a problem, we have teeth. But I, I guess I just don't, honestly, this is really not doing much because no one's been cited but if they do start getting cited under state law then there's some teeth but a stiffer nothing has this is a stiffer penalty mm -hmm. and yes. nothing well, has happened today right. that there has been citations of the state law <clears throat> so if people have been doing what they should have been doing at pilgrimage mm -hmm. and all the rest they haven't been cited yet so i don't know why <laughs> that would change but i understand your point so Mr. Mayor, with that in, lo in mind it is a stiffer penalty but we're still not comfortable with Section 5, and I still I would like to still make the motion. Wait, wait, wait. Patrick wants people no. to weigh in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Let me defer it then. Go Alderman ahead. Fox. You want us to wait in. Thank you, Mr. Right. Mayor. I'll go ahead and uh, chime in. And Alderman Baggett, I appreciate you saying this because two weeks ago, this is what I wanted. I wanted I to have the open dialogue to find out where everybody stood with this because, and that was a quote that I actually said, was we need teeth. We need to be able to go to an organization that violates on an ongoing basis and for them to understand that there's consequences and how they are operating their organization and their said event. Can be any event. And fortunately, you know, again, to your point, no one has been cited for city ordinance violation. No one's been cited against state law violation as well. No charges have been brought previously. So if everybody is operating within those guidelines, maybe there's not an issue, but this is the discussion I think that we need to have now, is how are we holding organizations accountable? Or can we? Or can we? And that's, we can't. We can't. And I, and I uh, actually no. don't know with uh, uh, Shauna if, if we push this out to 425, if that's ample time and we would need your direction on that, or if we have to push it out to May the 9th, yeah. I think is the next meeting. Nine. So Shauna, from, is two weeks enough time to, to work through that or do we need additional time? I work at your pleasure. So I will get it done <laughs> if you want me to get it done in two weeks. If you, if you want more time to even think about it amongst yourselves, like at home, not amongst yourselves, you will not violate the means that you will think about it yourselves at home. Well, we could also, if we delay it to the 9th of May, 
we could also each individually weigh in with you. Yeah, because there might be other ways to do it. I mean, we could be that instead of creating a resolution, we might want to instead add a section to um, five or 16512 that maybe says something about, you know, a previous uh, violation of state law during the event could be a denial. And it would only be really adding that section into your reasons for denial and not creating a, this actual this decency ordinance that or resolution that just ties back to state law. May I ask you how that would play out then for penalties? Would we still go back to city court, get a slap on no. the hand, and five dollars? No, 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 it would still be the state law would still we could you know, still ha have happen it under policy right. for state that would they would be right. cited under state law. Right. that's the whole reason right you you yeah you would know you still wouldn't take it to city court this would just be something that would be discussed as part of an application a special event application right. when it comes clear. to annually clear but that's just another way to look at it thank you Alderman Bland. so i still don't see <clears throat> the reason for this because i think i'll speak for myself i can't put my words in your head all of you we're still gonna be brought back to the same place we are tonight where we're voting against or for a special permit. I think in the staff legislative text and our own knowledge, if you've been here long enough, we're gonna know the pros and cons. The community is gonna tell us the pros and cons of an event. I think that we are creating an, a situation where we're gonna have people who are looking for reasons to put people's <clears throat> butt in a sling for what they view as the wrong thing, whether it is or isn't. I think that the state's got it written in a way of protecting us. If we're really out for money or if we're really out for more than a $50 fine, why? If we're out for telling somebody they can't have their event, that's what we're fixing to do tonight. All of the safeguards are already in place. If our intent is to go after a larger fine, if y'all, if that's what you want, go for it. I will not support it. I don't see any reason for it. And I think it's going to deter us. And I think it's going to create fear amongst festival and event organizers because we create this document. And I cannot support it. And I won't. Anybody else want to weigh in? Uh, we want to the request was for everyone to weigh in, but I mean... Mm -hmm. Everybody doesn't have to wait. Everyone does just because you ask. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, I'll hold my hands. I mean, I do appreciate the decency resolution because of the stiffer fines. Because what we don't want are gangbangers coming in regularly thinking they're going to get by with it and it's $50. Hey, let's go to the next festival and do this again. And then we have all these poor festival hosts and promoters who get duped by the same people every time. People do do that, and sometimes when they're young, they do it even more, just saying. So I, don't, I do think if we have anyone that's hosting an event and they become habitually a problem not dealing with their crowd or issues happening there, then yes, they should be held as equally culpable as the person mm -hmm. and people that are, are disobeying the law and violating our state law and what might be our resolution at the time. But... I do think we need to be really, really clear. I, I know that we had a stay on a certain state bill because the language was not clear and specific enough. Right. So I would urge us with Shauna's help yep. to be very clear on that and very defined in our parameters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks. Anybody yeah. else? Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor, can I maybe ask for some guidance because there's two paths that have been opened up. Tweaking this policy by resolution or mm -hmm. adding this to the existing ordinance that governs special events that would add elements of uh, violation of the law related to certain categories or however you want to say it as a element that you can consider in deciding to issue or not issue a special event permit. So it's, it's adding that as another element for consideration. Those are two pretty different tax uh, and if you'd like to give us some guidance on what you'd like to see or if you'd like us to draft both and give you a chance to weigh in on that. We could put it on the work session for more of a dialogue and guidance there. It just seems like those are two 
they're kind of ways to get to the same place, but that one uses the exist tweaks the existing ordinance and one establishes by resolution a statement of your of your policy. Clarification. Clarification. Ashana, does, where does that leave individuals then? We're just going to talk about groups and special permits. Well, I, sorry. Um, I, we'd have to kind of look at it. There's already some defined terms as to who the event organizer is, and so maybe we could use that. Um, there's a there's a lot of I I just kind of threw that out here trying to you know come up with some options for you. Um, I think we should think about it a little bit more. And I, I know that the intent of this board is to make sure that individual actors, whether they are part of the mm -hmm. event mm -hmm. or if they just happen to be there, won't impact right. the um, the event organizer. So it's just kind of coming up with how to write that. I know that that's what you want, so we can we will get that written in either of these documents, but I do think maybe we should do a work session and I can show you both and you can decide which, which, you, which you like the best. Do, but state law would continue to apply Always, to the yes. conduct of individuals. That Always. exists and today and, the, and that and will continue to exist regardless of what you do with this policy or in addition to your special events ordinance. And the fines. State law applies to personal conduct. It does, here. but will the fines also apply? They do. It right. goes to criminal court because it's written up under the state law. But under ordinances, they don't. Okay. But this is this <clears throat> what exists today, and what this policy, why, why this is written as a policy is to provide that you continue to can okay. charge under state law, which has the greatest potential so, of of uh, <clears throat> taking it to criminal. Would court. be would this board feel comfortable then delaying it till say May 9th? and Shauna will work to uh, have both of those options and clarify in both of those options uh, more clarity, more legal clarity in that, so that you can explain that, and then we put it on the work session of May 9th, and then the voting session of May 23rd. 20, what is it? 23rd. 23rd, so. Is that a motion? Uh, I would like to make a motion that we defer it to May 9th, um, work session and then take it on to the voting session of May 23rd. Thank you. Is there a second? To bring that option back. Second. I'll second. Thank you, Alderman Potts. <laughs> any further, any discussion on deferral to work session? Yeah, the only Vice thing. Mayor? I think yeah, this is it. referencing the deferral. So can we not vote on it the same night we have it on the workshop? Could we vote it's up to you? You yeah. can, but I'll be showing you two different things. Mm -hmm. So you might, I, I, the, I'm afraid that. You think maybe we may I won't have notice. Comprehend two different things. <laughs> it's not about that. It's about making sure that the agenda item is noticed properly. So I won't know if it's an ordinance change or a resolution change. Okay. And do, it, the, do it two weeks after yeah. that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that is our typical pattern yeah. to provide yeah. public notice on both your discussion and mm -hmm. then final action. I think it's important to get it right. There's no reason to rush it. Because I'm not targeting it to any group. You might think so, but I am not. Uh, this came up a while back, and it just happened to flow in the same time period. But I think we need, I, I've been to city court many times with um, constituents who have tried to sell their homes, but they couldn't next door because somebody wasn't keeping up their lawns and things. In city court, and this speaks to the deferral, the reason for it. City court does not give us much of a, a penalty at all. And people have a tendency to violate, violate, and violate when there is not a stiffer penalty. So, thank you. Ready to, mm -hmm. is everybody clear on what we're going to vote on? Yes. Deferral to work Tonight, session? Okay. Everybody's clear. Ninth okay, ready to vote? That's right. Vice Mayor? Yes. Alderman Blanton? Sir. Alderman Hansen. Yes. Alderman Peterson. Yes. Alderman Berger. Yes. Alderman Brown. No. Alderman Potts. Yes. And Alderman Baggett. Yes. Passes seven to one. We'll now move on to item number six. This is consideration of a special, special event permit for Franklin Pride Festival sponsored by Franklin Pride Tennessee at the park at Harlandsdale Farm on June the 3rd, 2023. Is there a motion? Move 
for approval. Is there a second? Second. Appropriate motion, second. Alderman Blanton, would you like to speak to the item? Sir. Sure. I don't think everyone, there's no way everyone's going to be happy tonight, one way or the other. Um, I know, and I sat and did my little clicker of how many were for and against, and I know that, um, and I agree that we need to be the voice of our constituents. Um, I think tonight's uh, speakers could make you think that the reflection is pretty in the bag and that doesn't reflect the people that I've also heard from that weren't in this room tonight. Um, I do believe that the organizer of this event have taken heed to what we've asked of them. I think they have altered their application. Um, and I, I understand that people from other communities that have moved here view Pride Festival is a Pride Festival is a Pride Festival. And um, I, I, much like they said, I don't know who all went and who didn't, but I do believe that there are people in our community who um, are diverse. And I think that we are a welcoming community. And I think that when we talk about the stickers you wear tonight, um, protect our children, I appreciate that. But I also appreciate the idea that parents are in charge of their children. If it's something that you don't want your child to be around, then you don't take them. Um, I appreciate everybody being here tonight. I appreciate everybody. Um, the other thing that I want to say is that a lot of the communications we received were not from people inside the city of Franklin. And that also weighs heavy on my mind. I had some from people who were in Canada and San Francisco and some that did not even speak English. So unfortunately, it's hard to weigh the sides, but I do weigh the actual sides of people I've spoken to and people that have spoken here tonight. And um, I support this moving forward. Anybody else want to speak to the motion? Mm. Yes, Mr. Ray, I will. Alderman Berger. I'd caution the audience on speaking and <coughs> commenting, and uh, if you would hold that to yourselves, we don't need the distraction up here. Well, we had a lot of fun here tonight, haven't we? <laughs> it's been uh, it's been hard for everybody, but um, tonight I heard it's not our job up here to enforce scripture. And you're right; it is not. Um, Someone said the whole issue got inflated because last time somebody said something about the covenant murders. And I do believe that that came from one of the LGBT people who brought that originally up. That's a shame. It has nothing to do that, that with this. This should never be even remotely put together. Hateful rhetoric. They're tired of hearing hateful rhetoric at our meetings. I have not heard hateful rhetoric. I've heard a lot of sadness. I've heard a lot of concern. But I've not heard hateful rhetoric. I don't think I've heard hateful rhetoric from either side. There's a few little things said, but not wouldn't call it hate. Um, someone said we should have the right. The right to what? They said to talk to speech, to gather, absolutely, 100,000%. That's not what we're talking about here tonight. Somebody said something about vitriol hate that we're hearing here tonight. Somebody said that tonight. I didn't hear hate tonight. I'm going over these things because it's disturbed me tonight. Someone said I've been threatened. Well, guess what? So have I. So is Alderman Hansen. Yesterday, I received two very disturbing phone calls, one that threatened me about my no vote tonight. And I didn't appreciate that, but I'm not deterred. And someone stood at that podium tonight and said, threats do not belong here in Franklin. They do not. Not for any one of you out there, not the LGBT, not heterosexuals, no one, and not this board. That's not who I know Franklin to be. Um, so 
somebody said Jesus was not a bully. That's right. But I don't, I don't know what they were inferring. Um, that the people here tonight were. Went over my head, I guess. Um, don't discriminate against us. Speech is not regulated, by the way. Speech, you can say everything any, any day you want. The Constitution does not speak to your behavior. Communities speak to behavior. Whether we know it or not, communities have an unspoken and a written decency, general decency community uh, laws or guidelines. Whether they're spoken, unspoken, written or not written. We've done that for centuries. Um, hearing the Bible used as a weapon, yeah, it should never be. And somebody said something about rewarding bad behavior, you get more of it. Well, that's true. We know how that is with our children. So no matter what side you voted, you, no matter what side of the vote you are on here tonight, I thank you for your emails. I have not been able to answer all your emails. Mr. Mayor has been great. I know Gabrielle has been great. I've not been trying to get back to you all. But thank you for your emails regarding no matter which way you asked us to vote tonight. But I found out a long time ago that when individuals fail to speak out against inappropriate behavior, they greatly risk undermining the very values that bind our community together. And I'm glad you all came out to speak out tonight. I had a couple comments from emails. It's not your job as alderman to protect, is it? It is your job as alderman to protect our town and all the children from graphic performances, graphic over-sexualized um, activities, and it is. Another one said, it isn't about free speech or First Amendment rights. And the writer of that email is spot on. And then she goes on again. Do we allow inappropriate sexual lewd behavior of any sort from anyone to be on full display in our public spaces with children in attendance, no less? Another said, Franklin Great Pride marketed their event as family friendly and continued to say to the aldermen and the public that last year's event was family friendly and will be family friendly again. Well, if it was so family friendly, why are we here having this debate? Obviously not. That is just smoke and mirrors to me, and it's just total dishonesty. Total dishonesty. If a Chippendale event or a pole dancing event, what if a heterosexual group came in here and they did music and everything, and then all of a sudden they had pole dancers on the stage? They would be here tonight, and I would be voting no. I don't care. It's across the board, equal treatment. Um, I was just as outraged as it breaches community standards, I would be. The driving narrative of those who demand we renew the application come with shouts of discrimination, bias, and slings of words such as anti-gay, homophobic, or, say to say, or, or sad to say, as I said tonight, outright threats of lawsuits and maybe personal threats to us. I see and I hear those comments as blatant intolerance and a lack of respect for the rule of law. I'm a constitutionalist. I believe in the rule of law. So sorry to disappoint uh, some of you, just a few of you, who admonished and threatened us. But I, and up here I think everybody on this board, took an oath of office of impartiality and to serve the citizens of Franklin to the best of their ability. So. A woman wrote us, said, sure, Tuesday's vote isn't a religious one. She's 100% right. <clears throat> she goes on to say, no matter the intent of Tuesday's outcome, it will echo loud and clear, not only in the hearts and minds of the pride community, but in the whole world. And guess what? She's 100% right again. She's right. It should echo loud and clear as the intent, at least on my part, is an objective decision, not a subjective one. She also said that message is in your hands. She was wrong. That message is not in our hands, Alderman. That message, my friends, <laughs> lies in the rule of law and the standards of law. 
which we need to re be reminded of through all the noise, all the false statements, and the blatant lies on both parts. The truth is, behind the smoke and mirrors, we do, and I think, I say this, I still think we have elected officials who serve with integrity and impartiality and stand for the rule of law. I can say that is true about every one of you. I'm so proud to be on this board with you, especially these new aldermen. So the question before us tonight is simple. Will the Board of Mayor and Aldermen renew the Franklin Gay Pride Organization application this year after they breached a general community decency standard last year through sexually explicit behavior and activity in a public place in front of children under the age of 18? Will there be consequences, keyword consequences, for the action or anyone's ill action for that matter? Why would the Franklin Gay Pride Organization be special or treated any differently than any organization or group that breached community decency standards? No, you don't get a pass in my book. And to be assured, no one is preventing the organization from meeting in our city or our county on private property. This vote concerns only public property and our standard of community behavior. There is an article and I never saw it till about a month ago. I ran across it recently. It was published in Williamson Source shortly after the election for the Ward Alderman 2021, and it said about me, Beverly Berger has been seen at board meetings, at Board of Mayor and Alderman meetings, keeping discussions on track and making a point of sorting emotion and rhetoric from the real issues at hand before she votes. Thank you, whoever wrote that. I gladly accept that, guilty as charged. Sorting emotion and rhetoric from the real issues at hand, that's our charge, Alderman. And taking my oath of office seriously to serve faithfully, civilly, and partially, and to the best of my ability. I exercise my oath of office tonight with my vote without discrimination, without partiality, to suspend them for one year by not approving this application for a Franklin Gay Pride Organization to use our parks in 2023 and wait a year for reapplication. Written by another gentleman in an email to the Alderman and Mayor, accommodation is implicit acceptance, and that would be acceptance of a breach of community decency standards. And finally, let me be clear. I vote objectively here tonight not based or on or influenced by personal feelings or emotion. And I will state very clearly, I'm a Christian and I follow Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. But tonight, we are charged to vote objectively, and it's based on behavior and past experience from last year. And I do not base my, my vote with any hard feelings or feelings or personal feelings or emotion, but based on the hard facts and evidence according to city, state law, and general community standards, I vote no on the approval of the 2023 application renewal. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Anybody else want to speak? I would. Uh, Vice Mayor? Yeah. Dad, I may want some clarification. You said something. I, I'll, I'll get to you. You you said that you would support. Sus they can't hear you. Well, I can't get much closer <laughs> un unless unless we do something a little bit different. It's on. Uh, you said <coughs> that you would support su suspending. Part of that conversation was for one year. You did mention that. Well, they can come back and reapply next year as, yeah. because I'm going to be voting no. But that's not really what this is. So which what, what is this suspends the the pride, this suspends it. Does that suspend it? Our uh, motion tonight. Do what? The motion tonight suspends them? I believe we're only considering the, yeah. the renewal or our approval of a permit, Vice Mayor. Uh, so it has nothing to do with next year. They'd have to reapply again. Okay. Then Unless there's some the motion. motion. The motion I'm fine is with that. That's, but that's not exactly what I understood from all of what you were saying. So you're, set, you're satisfied this is a one-year suspension. 
putting it off, they can reapply well, I, next I, year. I think it's some semantics. I believe that um, the vote is to renew, correct? Approve. Uh, the, the, the motion comment. is to correct. Uh, the motion is to approve. And I will be voting no because I believe they should wait a year to come back. And I, and I would point out, uh, just for the board's information, that if this does not pass, then we have to go back and have a motion to deny. So there'll be, there could be potentially two different mm -hmm. votes on it. Clarification, please. If the motion to approve fails, then we have to go back and then have a motion to deny. Right. May I ask why your... that is? May I ask uh, you clarification ask legally? legally? Yeah, you, we would have to give them written notice within five business days of this meeting, your reasons for denial. Okay. And so you have to affirmatively deny, because what if you have a motion to approve that fails, you didn't approve or deny anything. All right. Do you see what I'm saying? Thank you for the clarification. Thank okay, you, who, who was speaking? And I, uh, Vice Mayor, continue. <laughs> no, I'll uh, I'll yield. Good. Anybody else want to speak? Vice uh, Alderman Hanson. So I wanted to be as absolutely fair and as knowledgeable as possible when we considered this event permit. Um, so the first weekend of March, I actually called Robert McNamara, one of the founding partners of Franklin Pride. Um, he advised me actually that drag shows had gone on in both of the years that we had the event and that our staff was aware the drag shows were going on and that our staff had not said anything to them about it and our staff had never said anything to us as aldermen as we voted on it last year before the public backlash. So in all fairness to Franklin Pride, they didn't know there was an issue because mm -hmm. our staff didn't ever say that wasn't probably the best idea. But some of the themes in 2021 are we are family with Katie Queen and Sir Bitten. Bad girls of drag, described as alluring. The Misfits, interestingly enough, their performance is only 18 plus on the internet at any of their event venues on, through social media. Then we have drag pageant winners, Jackson Stone and Vanity. Our MC, Vidalia Ann Gentry was the most outspoken of <clears throat> all drag queens. Um, she is a national spokesperson for drag queens and at many events, if you Google the name. In one of the pictures of Jaden Diori Fierce, one of the misfits, she's clad in an Elmo themed drag outfit, which I'm sure to an underage individual, this could create confusion in their mind as to what's being represented. Venus Shannon, another member of the Misfits, was shown biting into what appears to be a live, bleeding heart with blood dripping from her mouth. This is something that could have happened in our park. Not appropriate for an under 18 audience. If you wanna go and see that, please do, you can purchase tickets to Susie Wong's or any other of the brunch drag queen shows in the city of Nashville, but they're for 18 and up. And you know what you're going for. And you don't need, as someone said earlier, to tell your child to look away or to suddenly cover their eyes because they weren't quite prepared. Because once it goes in their mind and in their head, it's there forever, as Tina Perrette said. You can never take that back. Why did it happen last year? Why did we all of a sudden get backlash? Because we had COVID and the public wasn't out in great force going to festivals, but they were last year. There's something else I wanna clear up for the public. And we got many, many comments, texts, emails on the Franklin Christmas Parade hosted by the Kiwanis. Just so you know, after a conversation 
with the Kiwanis. They finally called me back. They never called any of the constituents back. They did not call me back after their parade. But finally, months later, they did. They did verify that Franklin Pride was actually a sponsor of the Kiwanis Parade for two years, last year and the year before. That justified the magnets that were received in the children's candy bags because Franklin Pride was a bona fide sponsor of that event. When I shared this with Mr. McNamara, he had also shared that they were a, a sponsor. He also shared that he swore he did not know the individual or individuals that were <coughs> handing out flyers for their event to children only at the Christmas parade. He, that was not authorized by his organization, per Robert McNamara. But after the event last year, our city staff called them in for a debrief. And I don't know what that looked like because I have not received any notes, even though I asked for them. I can imagine some things, but I'm not going to speculate. But it basically was left at, well, this is kind of the stuff that goes on at Pride events, so sorry, not sorry. It's just the way it is when you do a Pride event. And, and I can testify that we also got an open letter from Robert McNamara to the <coughs> aldermen after their event, giving glowing reviews for their successful, wonderful, family-friendly event. <coughs> In my mind, if a city has called you in and said, hey, we got a lot of backlash from some of the conduct and performers at your event, most people would say, I'm so embarrassed. We will never do this again. What do we need to do to clean this up so we can continue to have our event in this community and be accepted by the public? But sadly, that is not what happened and as we go on again this year to hear their permit requests again in open comments Thomas Rice the husband of Robert McNamara has gotten up several times tonight was the third time saying either there was not objectionable com content in the pride event or that this is something you see every day no I I don't really see that every day. I know where you could find it, but I don't seek it and it doesn't just pop in front of me. Um, and yet again tonight said there was nothing objectionable. And that concerns me and it goes back to the trust factor of there, there's just not a filter there of appropriate versus not appropriate. And I know that they do really good things for the gay community and for families who are going through those challenges at home because I have cried over a lot of the emails that I've gotten from families who have their children go down this path and they're helpless and challenged and they're looking for community. But at that same token, I want to know as a community leader that the organization that they're turning to that's using our public property that's funded by our taxpayers is the best possible outlet for them and that they can be trusted with these families in these children's lives. And I'm just not seeing that. So I offered my assistance to Robert McNamara. I said, I will help you find a spot to have it. I will make the calls, I will find it for you on a private space. I will help you make sure this is truly, truly a family event that families can truly bring their children to without any shock value, without any fear, without any bad publicity going out, and that the community can turn around and say, wow, you did a great job. We did not expect it to be this good, and we never felt it was over-sexualized. And I had really hoped that he would take me up on this offer. But instead, he said, well, I'll check with my board, but that would just be putting us in a box. So I realized that what this inclusion and acceptance that they're seeking to find, I mean, they've had booths at our Main Street Festival, they've been in our Christmas parade, they've had a booth at the Pumpkin Fest. I would say that's really inclusive. Nobody has said, you're Franklin Pride, you can't have a booth here. Nobody said, you're Franklin Pride, you have to leave our Main Street Festival because you're insulting people. 
they gladly had them as, as a community partner in these other events, and they did a great job. But when they were left to their own vices to do it on their own, it turned into something completely different. I wanna read a letter to you that we received, and this is public, this is not anything private. This was a letter to the editor at the Williamson Herald, May 26th of 2022. To the editor, I grew up in East Texas reading the Bible and listening to Rush Limbaugh in my parents' car. At the same time, many were choosing their presidential vote based on their gay marriage options. I realized I was gay. Over the next decade, I endured and survived a variety of ex-gay therapies. I'm still a Christian, committed to God's wisdom in scripture for my sexuality, and I'm still gay. This year, I hoped Franklin Pride would be my first gay pride experience. And I wanted to bring some of my friends and colleagues to contribute to the diversity of loving perspectives. Giddy with anticipation, we applied to be part of Franklin Pride 2022 on behalf of Equip, the nonprofit I run that offers consulting and coaching to churches on an LGBTQ topic basis according to biblical sexual ethic. We knew we needed to be sensitive as guests in this space. As we shared with Franklin Pride, we were prepared to take a laundry list of precautions. We consulted a same-sex married man who runs a gay affirming ministry about how to respectfully contribute to the diversity of pride. He was confident that Equip could offer space at Franklin Pride where more conservative, gay people and allies could uniquely learn. We were going to bring a graffiti wall where pride goers could share about their painful and beautiful faith experiences. Moreover, we offered Franklin Pride to review all of our materials to our delight. Our application was accepted. Then 10 days later, Franklin Pride canceled our participation. I was heartbroken. In emails and phone conversation that followed, we were told our message was shaming and harmful to children. The evidence was, that was given was reference to studies about gay teen suicide and a statement that everyone needs sex and romance, quickly followed up by an accusation that a quip was not adequately gay affirming. I didn't get a chance to mention that their claim that everyone needs sex and romance excludes asexual and aromantic people from pride whose diverse experiences should be protected. I didn't get to point out that scientific studies Franklin Pride referenced show that gay teen suicide is correlated with family rejection not a compassionate traditional sexual ethic. I didn't get to bring up studies demonstrating that gay celibate Christians are quirky but healthy band of the LGBTQ plus spectrum, scoring in the normal range on measures of distress and scoring higher on overall life satisfaction than the average American. Sadly, Franklin Pride's decision was made. At the close of our phone conversation, I was told, P, comma, there will be kids there. We don't want them seeing messages from gay Christians like you. I felt rejected. And then I was curious, did Franklin Pride not want kids in Williamson County to think critically or consider diverse perspectives? Did they only want to offer kids their worldview and teach them to unthinkingly follow? Is Christ's life of celibacy and a call for his followers to consider celibacy shaming and harmful for children? Gay celibate Christians like me were told that our community or our kind of gay person was not welcome at Franklin Pride. June 4th at Harlandsdale Park was going to be my first Pride and a first Pride experience ever 
for many of my gay, celibate Christian friends. We were eager to participate and contribute our unique color of the rainbow. Instead, we've been painfully excluded. Ultimately, this unwelcome and exclusion is inconsistent with the spirit of pride. And the central principle of the gay rights movement is that gay people deserve the right to choose from themselves how they identify, who they love, and what they believe. If this is right, it's not honored for gay celibate Christians at Franklin Pride. And then all the rights of gay people are being undermined at Franklin Pride. So here's a group asking us to be inclusive, to include them. But as the emails and threats, as Alderman Berger said, that I've received came from a conversation that I had with the gay community when I explained that I had met with gay individuals in our community who were not for the Pride event, and they went ballistic. And I have recorded calls. If any of you would like to hear them call me, I'll be glad to play them. And I got a death threat as well. So it was very serious. But the vast majority of people who wrote in in support were very kind and shared from their heart why they were supporting it. But there is a segment that's very vicious and very evil, and they have gone after their own. And that's where I really have a problem. If I can't trust them to support themselves, I can't trust them to support other people and really show that love in this community. There's two other things I want to talk about. Um, one is staying safe and healthy at their event. So they have on here that they want to do fist bumps and elbow bumps to stay safe and healthy. But at their event, they offer something called mom hugs. So let's put this in perspective. So if you go to your local major large discount chain for various things and you've got your seven year old with you and the elderly gentleman comes to greet you as you come in and he has a sign on that says free grandpa hugs today, you would probably grab your child really close, sidestep, yeah, just kind of wave, move on. You might even report this guy. But how is it in, at an event where they say no touching, with elbow bumps, fist bumps, that all of a sudden mom hugs become acceptable other than it's a desensitization of young children? Because from birth we're taught stranger danger, keep your distance, but all of a sudden in this environment, a hug from a stranger is safe. So what kind of desensitization goes on to make them feel like maybe somebody else might be safe that's not safe in that environment. So I just wanna plug that in your head. And the other one has come from a lot of individuals through email, and the, it concerns kind of the hijacking of our Harlansdale logo and symbolism in Franklin that I personally believe is our intellectual property and that if you're going to use our intellectual property for, our, for your logos, please get written permission from our community to use it. Don't just hijack it and borrow it as your own and take it over as your own. Um, I don't want our police to be in the position of being fashion patrol or decency patrol. I don't think that this year, possibly in the future, I believe maybe I can, but this year I can't trust Franklin Pride to filter this event for people who might show up for shock value and do an impromptu drag show, or the nude individuals with G-strings on whose bodies are painted, or the ash chaps on individuals running around, or dildos hanging off of necklaces or belts. I don't believe that they're there yet, where they can say this isn't appropriate, we, we're trying to have a family-friendly event. And because of that, this is just not a year that I can say yes to this event. I would like to see them prove to us that they can go to private property and really do a bang up job and, and be a fantastic part of our festival series in this community. But this is, this is just not the year I can say yes. I would ask, uh, since the board has not seen 
uh, those exhibits that you oh, gave, if you would provide those to uh, Angie and uh, did you mean for the recorded telephone calls that you've done to be also part of the record? I can play them. If you can just provide those to Angie for okay. part of the record also, please. Anybody else want to speak? You ready to vote? No. Are you going to do something? Thanks, everybody. You've gotten a real, uh, gotten a real uh, Tuesday night uh, prime time here. And, you know, <coughs> I think this is a great lesson in community. I've only been doing this for a year and a half. Um, but, you know, sometimes in these, these situations you see the things that tear us apart and, and, and pull, us up, you know, pull us apart from each other. But then you get to see the heart of the people. I mean, when I sat there and listened to these 106 people, you could tell that every single one of you all, on both sides, that this was passion. This was something you were passionate about. That's pretty cool for us. For me, I mean, this this is a, a relative. This is the first time we've had this kind of extended thing for me, and you know that makes it really hard for people who do this who care about people. And I, I do. I care about people. I care about the Franklin Pride. I really do. The people. I care about the people who have spoken against it. And I have personal opinions. I think we all do, right? Um, it's, you know, it's, it's interesting that we, we, we voted the last two years eight to zero for this. Well, last year was the first year that this board did. Um, and we were, you know, we were under the assumption that it was family friendly. And, and nothing, you know, comments have been made, nothing that um, we were aware of. Um, you know, caused us to question that. And I think when you talk about a community that's not welcoming, when I hear certain, you know, the pride side say that this is not a community that's welcoming or, or able to, or accepting of us. I mean, there were two years where, right or not, like we thought that this was an actual family friendly event. And, and it was, in your opinion, and that's okay. And it, it wasn't clearly now. Uh, that we know some of the things that happened. It, it wasn't, but I think, don't forget the fact that, that there was a board two years in a row that voted for a family-friendly Pride event. And either everyone's interpretation of whatever it is you're interpreting, you know, changed in the last year. But it, so I, to me, I think that it is possible, but clearly something has happened. So, and this is the thing, I've heard from some folks that like, oh, that wasn't bad, it wasn't whatever, this wasn't offensive to me, and obviously we've heard from people where it was, very offensive. I have my own personal opinions of the offen level of offens offensiveness, and it, it would not be something I would take my kids to, but, um, you know, and I, I don't think it's really has a place in the parks. But the reality is, is that there were eight people up here that said, there is a way for pride in Franklin to happen. And we got maybe two emails last year against this, okay? And we got like two emails against it. So clearly something happened. I say all that to say that something did happen and we cannot, we cannot <clears throat> avoid the fact that there was something different or something that we were just made aware of even, or the community was made aware of um, that happened. And yeah, you know, as a community leader, I feel like that's unfortunate because I felt like that you know, two years with no real pushback from, you know, and it was a family friendly event and no, you know, there was no issues. I felt like, hey, maybe, you know, we are different than the rest of the, world, of, the of the nation or we don't let these things divide us. <coughs> um, but then, but the reality is something happened. And when it did, and we've seen the videos, you know, all the things, I want to applaud the, quite frankly, the staff and the mayor and others of us who, immediately started engaging with the applicant, whether it was through an email that was, you know, strongly worded or they actually were meeting with them. And, and, and so there's no, so if anyone thinks there's a drag show this year at this festival, it should it be approved. There's no drag show. I mean, we got a lot of, a lot of, a lot of emails that there was. And so I think there's some misunderstanding and that was done voluntarily. And so you're to be commended for that. 
because I think that was a step towards saying, hey, you know what? Like, and I know you didn't agree it was offensive, but like you said, hey, we're in the community, and so we'll do that. That message clearly has not gotten out to everyone, and maybe it wasn't enough, okay? I mean, because it, it was. It was it was a lot to take in in front of kids uh, for, for as a city leader to say that this is something that... Um, that we that I approved, um, and so how do you how do you go forward? The state of Tennessee, we had some confidence, I think, as Alderman, that um, there would be a state law that would criminalize some of these things in front in front of children. And again, regardless of your thoughts on the law, okay, because I know probably equally divided on <laughs> if we think that's right, if you think it's right or wrong. But it was, it was there, and there was some level of protections that we didn't have in the past. Um, that's now under review by a federal judge, and so adds a little more uncertainty to the mix. What I want everyone to know, too, is that we, there is a level of free speech, okay, so if, and I just will, will disagree. I mean, I fought for Jeff, you know, for you out on the square, and you got guardrails on, on your, on, on, on how you're able to use our square. You have guardrails. Now that we, we loosened them and they were too tight and we loosened them because inherently for it, for this country to work, there's gotta be this ability for free speech. There's also gotta be lines where speech crosses into things that this community doesn't, you know, accept is decent. Um, and then the state law was going to be there to help with that, with that, mon with that, and uh, it's not there at the moment. But we don't regulate, so we don't, <laughs> we don't get to make the rules on free speech. I know you think your aldermen control the destiny of, of pride events, it feels like, for this community for the rest of time, but we don't. The Supreme Court, the state legislature, the Congress, they do. They, they get to determine what free speech is. We, we really don't. We get to vote on permits, and, and they make the laws on what is and what is not free speech. So um, just wanted to make that point. Um, but what we can do, we can apply reasonably calculated um, conditions on permits to minimize the dangers and hazards to public health, safety, tranquility, morals, and welfare. It's in our code. Um, to me, clearly, there's still a disconnect. There's a loss of public trust, like it or not, in, in this area of performances. And it's not, we didn't hire the lineup that did this. I mean, I, did, I didn't, I, we did not pick what has brought all these people out today. So um, if you want to point the blame at us, that's fine, but you know, it's not fine because it, we, we didn't hire the lineup. Um, the public has reacted to something that we didn't do, but now we've got, we've got the job to decide on how to, how to move forward. So, you know, I've really, really struggled with this um, in protecting the free speech rights of this group, and I would like to try to do that. But um, I don't know that it's, uh, you know, that, that it's going to be possible, but I would want to either look at uh, amending this uh, motion or a motion for approval to add a condition or possibly two and I'd like for the board to weigh in I think we should at least discuss on you know at, at all cost attempt to preserve the elements of whatever it is they're doing that is free speech and then the things where it's not free speech that we can regulate based on the conditions that is outlined in our code uh, we should at least consider that. So I would like to hear from the board if they would consider um, a, it, because in, it, it, number one, uh, removing all the live performances from Pride this year. And, you know, when I hear public comment from those that are against this altogether, it all go, it's the sexual performances or perceived sexual performances in front of children. And so that would be one option. And I heard a couple of people mention that making this an 18 or older event um, would, be, would be something they would, uh, would like to do. The, the, the performances, I've not heard one pro Franklin Pride person say that if we don't have our live performances, 
um, we don't get to get our message out. You know, all the pump, and I've been listening. All the public comments have been centered around a family-friendly day for us to get together, and possibly removing the performances might um, allow that to happen, but um, remove the possibility of the sexual content from being in front of the children. Um, I appreciate the efforts that Alderman Hanson did to, to get on private property, but the Supreme Court has been very clear that that the public park for the types of things that are free speech related are open to everyone. Um, but not everything has to be allowed there. And so the performances, maybe that is a way that we as a city can possibly, I know everyone's not gonna leave happy with that, right? I mean, I know, I know everyone's not gonna leave happy with that. But uh, listen, there have been people on this board who've been trying to find a solution for this. Uh, that is a win-win for everyone in the community and it has, did not work out. And so I'm putting that forward. And if, if we can't get that, then um, yeah, we'll go from there. Mr. Mayor, I have a point of clarification on Alderman Baggett's statement, may I ask? Sure. Uh, Alderman Baggett, um, I just want to clarify, uh, we cannot regulate speech. This is not a constitutional issue. And, um, and, and I hear you, I, I know what you're talking about, but when you're talking about speech constantly there the last five minutes, uh, it's not a free speech issue. It's about behavior. We may not like the F word, we may not like the S word, we may not like sexual talk, we might not like people on the square calling in on the name of Jesus. We cannot regulate speech. So it has nothing to do with that tonight. It's all about behavior. So you you mentioned what, what the behavior, what you, behavior? So you talked talk about, about constitutional rights tonight about free speech. And I just think we need to clarify that because there's no way that we can ever regulate speech. We can go out here and if somebody can swear at us no, or I understand, somebody can call in the name I, of Jesus at us, but or, that Berger. cannot be person. Alderman uh, Berger, what you're saying though is you're denying this. All so you're saying that this is not. There's no free speech aspect to no, a group wanting to. There's together. none. There's no there, with a group. There, there cannot be a free speech aspect here. That there's no. Any more comments from the audience, no. please? This is serious discussion going on, and I'm not going to tolerate mumbling and whatever you're doing out there. So go ahead. Uh, someone can stand on stage at pilgrimage or downtown or at the Franklin Pride Festival and yell out obscenities or yell out things. We were, I've been told over and over, unless I've read the Constitution wrong and been legally uh, naive all these years, uh, that we don't regulate speech. So when we're talking about this issue before us tonight, it's definitely we either approve or disapprove an application. And when I made my points, I was specific to say it is a behavior issue of what took place, uh, overtly ex sexually explicit activities, and number one, on a in a public place, and number two, in front of children. To me, that's the only issue that we have authority over here tonight. I just want to be, I no, just want to I, be clear. I hear what you're saying, yeah. but I think in a, in a sense to be clear. that... No, I understand what we you're saying. And, and interesting enough, if... But I'll go ahead and say it, that it, it may change the outcome of this, but the reality is, is that without some of those additional controls in place, where I think the community that I've talked to, it was the performance, it was the actions. It's the behavior. It's the behavior, right? It is. Of the, the, and so that's the premise. Of my that. understanding that by rem what I was thinking is by removing the items that were the videos, the all the behavior aspect of it, the possibility yeah. of the sexual performances yeah, in you, front of you children. Mentioned you mentioned speech, so I just want to clear that. Well, I did, because there is an aspect. If, if this group wants to go and have the square in between the hours, th that's speech, and that's a gathering, and they can do that. And that's the same thing as in the park could do that. If they just want to get together and have a 
have a rally, they could do that. If this is actually removing the performances out of out of the whole thing, and listen, if you don't agree with that, that's fine. I mean, the reality is, is I want to demonstrate I I that I've, I've listened to both sides, mm -hmm. attempted to try to find a way yeah. to do this. And honestly, if we can't find a middle ground, then then I probably won't vote for it. But the reality is, is that there's got to be a middle ground and both sides have got to figure this out because this is not going away, folks. If you think that a denial tonight by this board, which may very well happen, if you think that means no pride festivals in Franklin ever, it's not going to happen. And, and so we've got to begin instead of rhetoric and call, throwing everybody under the bus, both sides. And if you think I'm talking about the other crew, no, both sides need to look at this and, and look at themselves in the <coughs> mirror and say, you know what? Yeah. Hey, guess what? We're not going to have that sexual content in front of kids. We're, not, we're just not the performance based. And then the other side is just, the, the pride side is to say, hey, I live in a community where that's not that's yeah, that's probably not OK. And then adjust for it. And this is an attempt to try and do that with an amendment. And if it doesn't work out, then what? We're going to have to go a different route, and other people have opinions, so I'll let them discuss. Well, let me, uh, what, what are you order? making an I'm amendment? I'm not. I threw out an amendment. I did not make an official amendment. No. Okay, thank well, you. Not yet. Point of order, Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. uh, regarding Alderman Baggett's uh, two ideas, uh, Shauna, can we consult on an event permit? Can you put those stipulations in or call it amendments? What uh, parameters, <clears throat> whichever you prefer, is that something that can be done for an event permit? by us right. so without association with um, the event organizer. So section 16-510 says any special event permit granted under this chapter may contain conditions reasonably calculated to reduce or minimize the dangers and hazards to vehicular or pedestrian traffic or to the public health, safety, tranquility, morals, or welfare, including but not limited to changes in time, duration, number of participants, or noise levels. There you go. So the answer is yes. Yeah, absolutely. You can put, you can I mean, put we, we put conditions on permits. I think most of the time the conditions I think are put on before they even get to you as they're talked through with staff, mm -hmm. like time of the <coughs> event and that kind of thing. But yes. Mm -hmm. nope. All on the ground. <laughs> People are surprised I haven't spoken yet. I usually go first. I've <laughs> decided not to be the first guy this time. <laughs> but um, the, uh, Days and weeks that I've spent in this thing, um, I'm definitely going to talk for a little while. So I'm sure uh, Vice Mayor is probably not surprised by that at all. <laughs> not in the least. So whether you're here for an approval or a denial this evening, you may be of the mindset that this is a really easy decision for this board, or at least it should be. And maybe in a vacuum, maybe personal beliefs, sure, um, I could see that. Um, but I want you to understand that this decision is much more complex than that. Despite people suggesting that there aren't complexities or there aren't challenges to it, it very much is, whether it's for an approval or for a denial. I know that my other board members have done a lot of work on this as well. I literally, for all intents and purposes, shut down my business for days. I've not been with my family. I'm not even exaggerating that. This has completely consumed mm -hmm. my time. I can't even focus um, on, on the work at hand. And I'm not saying that for any other reason than to let you know that a lot of time was spent thinking, critically thinking about this, researching this, reading, trying to come to a good conclusion on something that I'll be very candid, there is no win-win in this at all. There's not, there's no, there's no good. So I've talked to a lot of people, read a lot of emails like everybody else. Um, I gotta tell you, this is new to Franklin this divisiveness, this seeking of sort of government intervention. Um, the Franklin I moved to, I remember it was sort of instead, you kind of lead it into your churches and into your faith. Uh, maybe because even our faith organizations can't seem to reach agreement on this topic. We've got dozens of churches and pastors who support, and we have dozens of churches and pastors who oppose. And we have a lot in the middle who just choose to not even be present in this. And I think that maybe that's why you're coming here looking for respite in a group of eight volunteers of insurance people and realtors and marketers to find the path forward for you. But the reality is, again, the debate is incredibly complex. 
I was not thrilled with deferring two weeks ago. I made that very clear. I want to move on with city business. But I will say it gave me an opportunity to do some really deep analysis. And um, I know a lot of people have not responded to emails. I haven't. But I chose to dive into the emails. So I pulled every single email that had a Ward 2 address. And then I pulled every single name from emails and threw them into a spreadsheet that then I ran against the Ward 2 voter rolls. This might actually surprise you, but it was five to one in favor of approving the permit in Ward 2. Now, I'm not suggesting to you that everybody responded, but those engaged, and I'm talking literally hundreds, almost a thousand emails that were in Ward 2, five to one were in favor of approving. In addition to that, the people that I know, the people that Franklin that I moved into, not the Franklin we're becoming, are very supportive of doing the right thing. And keep in mind, these people are not supportive of pride necessarily, all these folks. I have my own personal beliefs about what's happening, what happened last year. But these are conservatives who have said to me, above all else, I care about freedom. And regardless of the issue, I believe in the Constitution. And I'll be honest, I found that very heartening. I found it great that there were people who could put aside emotion and, and outrage and, and all of that and say, Matt, I, I get it. And I know the situation that you're in. I don't love it, but they have a right to be there. And so I understand what you're going to do. And so I approve of you moving forward with this a permit. Five to one in Ward 2. I'm sure other wards have a completely different math, maybe. But Ward 2, five to one, outnumbering those wanting denial. The other, the other challenge sort of we have here is I know that people are saying there's not a legal issue with this. But the reality is there, it, we, it will be. You're absolutely right, Alderman Baggett. This is not ending right here. If we deny this, we go the same path as Starkville, Starkville, Mississippi, who tried to do this very same thing. And what happened in Starkville was a judge immediately told them, you got it wrong, try again. They had to pay the fines. Insurance didn't cover it, so it came out of taxpayer dollars. And I've talked to some of you, and you've said to me, I don't care. I'll write the bill personally. Mm -hmm. I took down your names. When we do this, <laughs> I will be calling you for your contributions. But... You didn't get any names by mistake. <laughs> no, I, I, I got them. I got them, nailed them. But here's, the, but, here's, but here's the situation with it. Is not only did they have to pay, they had to make several proclamations about the inclusivity of the city. They had to reinstate it. The same thing's going to happen here. Pride's going to walk this denial because we have to give them in five days why we denied it. And as of right now, true to form, here's, what, here's what's not happened. Here, here's what's against us in going for a denial. Let me, let me walk through this real quick. First of all, we have never as a city ever denied a permit, ever in our history. Not for any purpose, for any event, ever have we ever denied a permit. One strike against us. We have set a precedent. Several years ago, significant issues with pilgrimage. We yelled at them, we mandated some changes, but we gave them a second chance. So now we have a precedent of doing a second chance. Third thing, video comments, literally comments at a work session from members of the board, literally fist pounding for the unfettered access to the constitutional rights. And then in the very next breath, the same fist pounding to revoke it from another group. Exhibit A right there. Exhibit two is, and literally this was just quoted, I'm, I'm wrote it down. I told Robert McNamara, Franklin Pride, I'm, I apologize because Franklin Pride didn't know they did something wrong. It was literally just said, all hands. you literally just gave Exhibit 2A to a case against denial because you said they didn't know. And I'm not trying to advocate. I told Pride, you, this is not my cause to champion. I'm not trying to champion cause. I'm saying legally, we have as boxed ourselves in a corner. Here's the other thing. It's content. It's not content neutral. We, we can't argue that they broke standards. They may have broke my standards. Maybe they broke your standards. The spirit of standards are broken. But we can't point to a law. You can't point. If, if there was a law in place that they broke, the state wouldn't have had to pass a law. Alderman Berger wouldn't have had to do a resolution. I mean, do you understand what's mounting against this, this discussion? You can't make a fight and an argument to say you broke a law and then say, oh, but maybe you didn't. So I'm going to go ahead and pass this law and I'm going to go ahead and get this resolution passed. Amen. You can't do that. It, it, you're, you're just making the case for why they're going to walk back in here. And by the way, a chancery court judge is not going to walk in this. Mm -hmm. They're not going to do our job for us. They're going to make that permit come back in here. 
and we're gonna have to redo this all again until we get it right. And I gotta be honest with you, I'm ready to get on with other business. We delayed six items tonight. I'm so tired of spending months and months and months talking about the same stuff. Believe it or not, I think part of the reason, and I've heard a lot from a lot of my folks in War II, let's get on with fixing our roads, let's get on with fixing our infrastructure, let's get on with city business. We have delayed it and delayed it and delayed it. This is just gonna come back. And you say, great, bring it back. Okay, well, to what end? At some point that judge is gonna say, you all can't get it right in Franklin, Tennessee, by the way, first city to even try this. And so therefore, I'm gonna make the decision for you. It's gonna happen anyway. There is no denying them being able to admit. It, it's just not gonna happen. Here's the other issue that's gonna happen. It's not even about sort of what happens if we deny. The second issue is going to be the precedent that we set. <clears throat> I am telling you, if we do this now, there are gonna be issues with every festival, pilgrimage, all of that is gonna have issues. and. All it takes is, is one person to get up on that stage and make a statement like Mayor Morris did a few weeks ago. And then we're in here talking to, talking to pilgrimage about having a two-year hiatus based on a new resolution. Here's the other thing that's probably very likely to happen in this whole thing is, well, I'll, I'll skip that part. This permit, is for a six hour event in Harlandsdale Park, wrapped in signage with no drag shows, that the only people who get to go into that park and into that event are the people who want to be there. My, I will tell you what I believe could happen and we've been seeing it playing out. We deny this permit, that's no longer a six hour event in that park. This is filling up our main streets with protests, with who knows what they want to bring from a national level. Most TV cameras I've seen in this room in, in a, the year, two years I've been here, we are just inviting. We're inviting the very thing that you think that you're afraid of, our tourists and our own children seeing this, you're inviting that to happen versus allowing it to happen somewhere else in another area. And, and by the way, I'm just gonna say it's about parental choice. I, I, by the way, I was all for parental choice. I, I know we were in the in another government building fighting for parental choice, telling people, don't tell me how to raise my kids. I find it amazing some of the same voices are in this room saying, no, 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 you can't have parental choice and we're gonna take that right away. Again, which just the hypocrisy is killing me here. Forget whether or not you agree with it or you don't agree with it. I feel like we're just literally making it so obvious what we're doing here. I'm not just gonna talk about denial. I need to say this to the approval. I did meet with the pride folks, I'll, I'll acknowledge that. I tried to give them a pathway that I thought would have been fantastic. I understand that you didn't want to take it and I get it, but the stakes are high for you here. I want to be really clear about this. There will be people at your event taking photos and videos. You've made a commitment to this community. You've, you have said in writing on this application, this is what we're going to do. And you've committed to that. We've looked at your performers. They cannot differ from what we know that they are going to do. But one of the legal reasons this board can deny you next year is for falsifying information. Your integrity, not your content. Anything happens at that event, if it's approved this year, that, that violates what you have committed to in terms of this community, and you're done here in Franklin, I think you're taking a huge risk. I'm gonna play it for everybody. You're taking a huge risk. I think this year, I think it would have been great to go do something different this year. My own personal belief, but I know why we're here. This is the final thing I'm gonna say. Matthew, I'm, and you know me, I'm gonna lay it. Matthew 22, 21. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's, give to God what is God's. Jesus reminds us we have to obey the law of the land. Like it or not, this is the law of the land. If you don't like it, go change the law. You don't start with the unconstitutional denial of an event permit down here to go change law. The mandate you're bringing to this board, I gotta be honest with you, it is unrealistic, and frankly, it's unlawful what you're asking us to do, to knowingly violate the law, to deny something that's granted to people through the Constitution. It would be an irresponsible waste of taxpayer time and money to deny a permit that will ultimately be awarded anyway. Literally think about what sidewalks, what roads, what infrastructure do you not want fixed because something's coming off the CIP 
list in a hurry if we if we deny this. I'm not trying to be a champion of the cause, but I am trying to protect my city as a whole. And I'm also trying to represent Ward 2, which has clearly told me they're not interested in this fight. Approve the permit. Final thing, most of you said this issue is bigger than the permit. I agree with you. If there's a spiritual battle being waged, this is where give to God what is God's. God's king. The collective whole of all the elected officials in this country could not solve this issue that's a national and state debate. The state tried to pass laws. It got pulled back. You're asking something really that we don't have any authority or power to do. I may share, I, I share your concerns about kids all the way, my whole family. I don't, I'm not gonna take my kids there. They're not gonna go there, but I've raised my kids. So if you wanna, if you wanna fight this battle, <clears throat> give it to God. Get on your knees and pray and give it to God. Don't lay it at your feet of the board and alderman to say, to, to, to solve a moral issue in this country. It's an event permit. There's only so much we can do with it. That's it, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Brown. Alderman Potts, uh, so you want to speak. Yes, sir. I guess I gave you the nod there. Uh, I did have a question uh, regarding your two suggestions. And, uh, you know, Alderman Brown, appreciate the, the words that you shared. I don't think that we've addressed what your question is. And so we either need to move forward with a motion and for discussion uh, with one or both of those, or we need to take it off the table. Um, yeah, the, and I would be curious to hear the thoughts on the two that I proposed. I think if you're going to make an amendment, make the make amendment. It it's not something that you're going to get from Understood. the board yeah. by that's right. hand picking and picking out who you're going to get to make an amendment or Understood. whether it's hot or cold. Understood. So Thank you for the do guidance. what you want to do. I appreciate that. Uh, did you want me to make? Did you want to just talk? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Matt. All right, Mayor. May I speak before he makes the amendment, well, Mr. Mayor? Sure. Sure. Thank Go you. Go ahead, but I may stop you if it's, it seems inappropriate, Alderman Berger. Um, it's my comments. Um, and he wants to make an amendment, but I'd like to make a comment before, according to what uh, Alderman Brown said. Uh, your email said they have the right to be there, uh, but again, there's not a right for certain behaviors. We have yeah. to keep separating that. We always seem to get that mixed up. Everybody has a right. They have a right to apply. They have a right to be there. But when something happens, then you sort of, uh, you know, have to say, do they still have a right to be there according to what happened and what behavior? Uh, we just denied the, uh, the gathering. You said we just uh, didn't deny the gathering on the uh, square. But, Matt, the city square was not a special event permit. We're just talking about special event permits here. That is just a gathering. You protest, you demonstrate, you go out and pray in the square. It's your right. It's free speech. You go. Um, so that is a right to gather versus a special permit, special event, excuse me, special event permit that they're talking about. And... and um, Something about only people who want to be there go. Well, the children can't speak for themselves, but they can be taken by parents or adult individuals, but they don't, they don't speak for themselves yet. They don't have that ability. And it was said, too, tonight that never have we denied a permit. Well, hello, that happens all the time. Somewhere in the space and time of the world, there comes a time when we do something that we've never done before because it was, we are charged with that. We are charged as a body to do that. And because we have never had this issue before. So we didn't deny a permit before because we've never had this particular issue mm -hmm. of, of, of activity, of behavior in a park, in a public space with children. We gotta go back to that. And the constitution doesn't give a right to have a permit it, um, when acts occur in public spaces with kids the constitution doesn't speak to that right it speaks to the right of free expression of speech but 
why would we even have a permit if it doesn't matter? Then it's a free-for-all. Y'all don't need to come in here anymore for a special event permit because we're just, we're just arguing ourselves right out of a special event permit. If we don't have checks and balances on it and we don't have consequences for when things happen in events, then what good are permits? I don't get it. So, uh, I, so that me, that's or, that's well, what Mayor, that is what point of order. Can, but could the city attorney just briefly describe to us the purpose of permits and how we use them? Special, special events. You know, you have two different types of permits, and they um, are meant for a couple of, couple of things. One, we need to know what's happening in our square, what what pe what kind of things people are asking to do, who wants it when. Um, Special events are different from protests and demonstration of permits in that they are bigger and they generally involve the closing of streets. So we have to involve our city staff. They sometimes go over a period of days. So we have to involve our solid waste and police and fire. Um, so the, the purpose is to, one, know who, who wants to use your, your parks. Special events are only allowed for generally nonprofits who want to, you know, generally push a message or, or do something in the park toward their, toward their um, you know, whatever they're for, Michelle. Heritage Foundation or pilgrimage or whatever. Um, and it's so that we, we know when, where we put our calendars together and figure out like what events can happen where and when and how, how much how much uh, city staff time is needed and, and making sure we're spread out and we're not doing too many things on the same weekend. Eric, I don't know if you want to add on to that. Yeah, there, there's the planning and support of an event, the use of public space, how we manage that so that there aren't conflicts with others who want to use the same space at the same time. So it's all how you manage what are public resources in public space and put structure to it. Uh, and then we walk through all the different logistics around it. And, um, you know, th this provides for a clear understanding of what is happening, when, and so that we can provide for the safety of all involved, those who are participating and those who are just out living their lives. So it's, it's just a, a clarity around the use of public space and how it impacts the community as a whole. And similar to how we were talking to you guys about the protest and demonstration, public gathering and expression event permit, you kind of explained why we need it. You know, you're, you're talking about, you know, you need to be able to know who's <coughs> going to be there, when they're going to be there, and how they're going to use it. That's the exact same rationale for both permits. I'd like to make a motion then to... I had Alderman Potts. Oh, I apologize. Yes, you did. <laughs> If he wants to yield the floor to you, that no, no, no. I had him speaking, and I, it's up to Alderman Potts. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and say a few things here, uh, Alderman Baggett, and uh, then we'll we'll move there. Um, I, I feel like sometimes I, I start my discussions and saying I'll be brief, and uh, well, it doesn't happen. <laughs> um, it's been I, defined I, many I am times. Gonna, <laughs> Um, I, we all have a lot of notes, uh, pages. I took six pages of notes tonight during public, uh, public comment. I, I capture those notes because they're important. They weigh in. So I, I want to thank all the Franklin citizens who emailed me, called me, texted me, that I spoke with. Um, yeah, sure, we got spammed a little bit here and there, but for the most part, you know, there's probably 2,500 accurate emails that came in. And um, it, it has been losing sleep for weeks. I wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning thinking about this on a regular basis. Um, but I, I want to also say I want to thank those who express themselves in a professional manner. Tonight's a great example of that. Everybody is so professional. You took to the podium, sure it was a short time, but mm -hmm. everybody was here being nice, being polite. Uh, most of the emails were that way. It's unfortunate that some of us did receive threats. Um, I'm really challenged with the fact that the clergy and our town are split on this as well. And I say that because a as a Christian, I, I was shocked. Both sides of this argument or of this discussion 
both of them told me I was gonna burn in hell. All right? I mean, we, we, it's polarizing. You know, but as I say that, I'll circle back and I look out at our overflow crowd right now and I see passion, I see love for Franklin. I mean, we all love Franklin. I mean, this is a volunteer job. <laughs> and we, we turn it into part-time and sometimes full-time jobs uh, based on what we're doing. And, uh, but we love it. And when this meeting ends, you know, we've all got to remember this passion and the love that we have for, this, for our city. And so as you're sitting there, hopefully elbow to elbow, maybe next to somebody that's on the other side of the discussion, take respect, take professionalism out of this room. And just remember, these are the things that, you know, make Franklin what it is. As I looked at this, um, I, 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 I consulted several times with our, our legal department, with uh, our, our attorney, Shauna Billingsley, and I, I looked at it similar to what Alderman Brown was, was speaking to, and that is, at last year's event, the event organizers nor the performers received any warnings from our parks department event team, nor by the police department. No one was ticketed, no one was cited, no arrests were made at the event, all right? Last year, at the conclusion of the Pride event, members of the parks department met with the event organizers to debrief the event, and during that meeting, the Parks Department colleagues were assured that what occurred would not occur again in the future. They've demonstrated that actually this year by providing all of their performers. Additionally, the event organizers uh, also met with, city, uh, with our city administrator, um, and, uh, and I believe the mayor may have been in that meeting as well, and in that meeting they yet again assured us and said, we messed up, we know we can't do that, we're, we're going to make right by it. So following the event, uh, the event videos, um, I don't know how many of you know this, but they were reviewed by the district attorney, uh, Kim Hepler. God rest her soul, she recently passed away, but um, the videos were reviewed by her and determined that no violation of city ordinance or state law had been violated at that time. And so no charges were brought against the event organizer or those that were in the video. And just for the record, District Attorney Hepler served for 15 years, was well respected across the state for her balanced and conservative approach to Tennessee law, and she was actually appointed to the 21st Judicial District's top prosecutor of the year uh, and was elected to the post three times, most recently okay, last year. That's all right. Um, and so I, I say that because I, I lean in on the experts that we have here. We lean in on our law department. When it was elevated to the district attorney, and was reviewed at that level as well. And when our police department is doing the review as well, and they're on site and taking action if action was needed. But last year, again, um, no one was warned of potentially violating an ordinance or state law. There was no one was ticketed. No one was arrested last year as well. And uh, again, the district attorney chose not to, after reviewing the videos, chose not to pursue any charges. Now, did I like the video? Personally, no. Did I agree with it? No. That's my personal beliefs, but when I'm looking at this from a legal perspective, I have to lean in on those legal experts. I'm gonna to speak to the event organizers. Um, last year, you presented this as family friendly, even though laws weren't broken, the theme of what you presented and you hear about the trust, that was broken. Videos were inappropriate. I've spoken to this on previous meetings about this and I hope wherever the event organizers are here within the room that they've seen this public outcry and this public standard that is expected in the city of Franklin 
on what is acceptable and what is not. Uh, I also want to put this out there uh, when we're talking about the legal, uh, our, our support from our legal team. If you've attended any of our previous meetings or you've seen them online, I have and I will continue to formally request that both our city parks department, our event team specifically, and our leadership, along with our Franklin Police Department, receive ongoing training specific to event-related city ordinances and state laws that are currently in place or could be in place with the pending law that's being reviewed right now. And to do that so that each, is fully, each individual fully understands when a violation occurs and how to take the appropriate steps. We owe that to the people working the events. We owe that to our city as a whole. We have to follow the law. We have to follow our city ordinances. Uh, I'm just going to kind of move through this because we've got more to discuss, but um, as long as I'm in office, I'm going to continue to review these permits, and there is a need for these special event permits. It doesn't guarantee that we give them every single time. I'm going to thoroughly review them. This one uh, is a lightning rod, obviously, but we have to continue to review and improve the policies. And I think, Alderman Baggett, you mentioned this as well, is our policy is this one day and actually referenced Mr. Daniels. Policy was, was at one point, it had to be reevaluated, it was reviewed, it was amended, and now a new policy is in place. And, and that's how this works. That's how it's supposed to work. So are we gonna get it right every time? No, but when, it, when it's not right, we make the adjustments and we move it forward. So um, again, I've, uh, I'm gonna stop there because we've got more to discuss, but I, I, I want you all to see that this is not an easy decision. This is not something that we take lightly. And uh, again, Thank everybody for being here and those that are watching online as well. And just recognize that we all are working towards the betterment of our city. And that's our primary focus. I've got Alderman Peterson, but I think uh, uh, Ms. Billingsley wants to make a comment about something before I recognize Is Alderman okay? Peterson. Yeah, I'm just gonna call it oh, I, I, I wanna just, I have been asked by Alderman Baggett about the purpose and we actually do have a purpose and intent in the code. I just want to read it to you so you know what it says. The city supports community gatherings, demonstrations, and assemblies. The purpose of this chapter is to promote public safety and welfare, to provide the city with a minimum amount of time to logistically accommodate requests for special events, public gathering and expression events, and temporary street closures, to assure that the First Amendment rights of those who wish to peacefully participate in special events and public gathering and expression events on city public property are preserved and protected, to coordinate multiple uses of limited space, to ensure that the streets and sidewalks remain safe and accessible, and to assure reasonable access to public property by other community members not involved in the requested events. So you know that that was your purpose. What was to be preserved and protected? It said something for, needs to be preserved and protected. To assure that the First Amendment rights of those who wish to peacefully participate in special events and public gathering and expression events on city public property are preserved and protected. Thank you. Alderman Peterson. Thanks. Mr. Mayor, I call the question. There's a second? Sure, a second. Uh, what is the question? Yeah. No. That is, it, we're going to vote, vote on yeah. the motion. No. Vote on whether the vote. Call, the question's been called. The question's been called. This is to end debate. Discussion. Oh. Alderman, yeah. Yeah. Vice Mayor Barnhill. Yes. Alderman Blanton. Oh my gosh, I've been talking so long I forgot what I'm voting. <laughs> this is this to, is end, to end, end discussion. Yes. Alderman Hansen. No. Alderman Peterson. Yes. Alderman Berger. No. Alderman Brown. Yes. Alderman Potts. Yes. And Alderman Baggett. No. So now we're going to vote on the motion. 
right? Yes. And no. Uh, the that's right. End of debate passed five to three. Mm -hmm. So we're now ready to vote on the motion. So, Mr. Mayor, point of order. So, is it not permissible at this point to offer an amendment? No, we just vote against it. At all? Can you, can, on can the you motion. Read? Only on the motion. We're on the motion. No amendment. The okay. motion is. You don't get your amendment. <laughs> Vice approval. Mayor. Wait, wait. Can, can we say what the motion is? <laughs> the, motion. the motion is to uh, approve the no permit. Can we have a comment? Uh, no. 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 Okay. Can I uh, reconsider the previous motion? Could reconsider the previous motion. What was your vote? No. Five three. No. It would have to be someone from the winning side to, to call the previous question. I'll make a motion to uh, move previous question. So you want to reconsider the motion to call the question? Yes. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Can I second that? You can second that. Ready to vote? Mm-hmm. Well, there's do discussion. Need, do I need to state? He needs to state. No, no, I don't discussion. think there's any discussion. Just, no discussion on this. We're just, just recalling, recalling the vice bill. mayor. Recalling. No. No. Are we clear to re what we're, doing? we're voting whether to recall the motion, correct? Right, right. whether to and reconsider so. the motion, the call the question motion, to open it back up for debate. Right, exactly. Alderman Blanton. No. Alderman Hansen. No. Alderman Peterson. No. Alderman Berger. Yes. Alderman Brown. No. Alderman Potts. Yes. And Alderman Baggett. Yes. Uh, Still no fails amendment. five to three. No amendment. So we're back to the original motion, ready to vote on the original no. motion. No. Yes. Could you please read the original motion we're voting on? The original motion was to approve um, Special event permit for Franklin Pride Festival sponsored by Franklin Pride, Tennessee at the park at Harlandsdale Farm on June the 3rd, 2023. Vice Mayor. No. Alderman Blanton. Yes. Alderman Hanson. No. Alderman Peterson. Yes. Alderman Berger. No. Alderman Brown. Yes. Alderman Potts. Yes. Alderman Baggett. No. You guys are great. Mm. So it's a tie vote, 4-4. Four, four. And I want to make a statement before I vote. Um, when I first ran for Alderman at large, one of the questions I was asked by a group of guys that I was wanting to support me was, what are you going to do when you're in a room full of people and half the people got on red buttons and half of them got on blue buttons. Well, this is the dreaded situation all of us are in tonight. And I think the worst thing about what I'm seeing tonight is there is division among our community and on an issue and both sides have pretty much drawn a line in the sand. I know there were efforts to get the pride group to uh, modify some things about their event, but we're here that they want the entire event. We've all had our share of emails, both for and against granting the permit. And I've heard all the comments, and I think uh, Alderman Brown, uh, everybody has kind of uh, enumerated a lot of those things. I want to go back to my role uh, with this event um, and what happened? Uh, as we all know, after the uh, event, we all got lots and lots of emails. And we got lots of uh, videos, and we also saw the pictures in the Tennessee. Uh, my first reaction was I knew that our team regularly reviews events before they happen and after they happen. A whole bunch of people from every single department in our city. I'm not part of that group normally, but I told Mr. Stuckey, I said, 
I want to be in that meeting. I want the people that applied for this event in that meeting. And so it happened right here on the floor. And the first thing I said to the applicant, I said, you said it was family friendly and it was not family friendly. So from there, there occurred lots of things that happened, changing the permitting process, uh, listing the type of acts that are gonna be there, and the fact that now the uh, folks have said they're not gonna have a drag show. Um, I take it very seriously that I represent all the people in Franklin. And one of the initiatives I've been leading now for about five years is Unite Williamson, where we try to help people understand who their neighbors are. Doesn't matter what their skin color is or how they dress, they dress, dress differently, their habits, their religion, their language. And we've had an opportunity, it's not a Chamber of Commerce event, it's a community event where people come together and learn who they are. One of the biggest scares I ever had in my life was we had a speaker at the event one year and he finished a great talk, inspirational, and he said, everybody take out their cell phone. And I, you know, I was very, I wanted everything precisely done just on time. And he did the perfect thing. He said, find somebody you don't know and exchange your contact information. So that for many of us that happened. You know, I met a, a third generation Pakistani man uh, whose religion and the way he dressed and the way he talked was different than anything I'd ever experienced. And I've had lunch with him a number of times and I think that happened to other people. So, you know, I think that it is important that we continue to learn who our neighbors are in Franklin. You know, the same First Amendment that we're talking about tonight for religious groups also applies to the pride group. You know, they, they do have that opportunity to express themselves and they have the opportunity if they want to apply to use our parks. I, I'm gonna vote to approve the event and don't get up and leave yet. But I'm not finished with my statement. You know, I had a meeting recently with the applicants and I told him, I said, you're underneath the microscope. I don't know why you want to have the event. I said, if there are attendees that are viewing something, think it's out of line, they're going to notify the police. If an act is inappropriate, they're going to stop the event. You know, I consider that I'm giving you a lifeline for this event. And here's, here's the short line on it now. I'm going to work to make sure if you violate the trust that we're placing in you right now, that I will work as hard as I work every single day to make sure that that event never happens in Franklin again. I want to say that again. If you violate our trust of this board, I will work as hard and I'm sure this board will join me in working very hard to make sure that that event never occurs. Now, let me go back to just one other thing here. And we have uh, an ordinance that gives us guidance as far as what we approve and what we disapprove. And that's what I've had to hinge my opinion on. I've heard lots of emotion. I've listened to every single one of you. But we have section 16-511 that talks about a special event permit and what the applicant must agree to do. And then we also have a section in that 16512, which states um, what standards we can deny or revoke the permit. And so those are things that have to guide me. Um, I don't intend to go to the Pride Festival. That's not my thing. 
I know that there will be families that go, and that's fine. That's their personal decision. So I hope that this will help in some form or manner, in some form or some manner, help unite our community. You know, we live in the best place in the world, and we don't need to screw it up. And boy, we sure do try sometimes to screw it up. But you've got a bunch of people here, great aldermen that donate their time, work hard as heck to, to make sure that we're doing things to keep Franklin a place where everybody wants to live, work, and raise their family and worship. So uh, the, approve, the permit is approved and we'll continue to move forward. Item number seven, this is a public hearing. Please, if you're leaving, leave quietly. Don't talk out in the hall. Clear the building as fast as you can. Thank you. This is a public hearing consideration resolution 2023-05, a resolution adopting a plan of services for the annexation of property located north of Liberty Pike and west of Turning Wheel Lane by the City of Franklin. Move to approve. Second. This is a public hearing. Public hearing. Public hearing. Oh, sorry. I'm just ready to go. Yes. Is, uh, yeah, yeah, this Emily's is coming. Emily's coming. <laughs> I'm sorry, Alderman Peterson. Yeah, we're going to tell. We're going to explain that. Yeah. Sorry, I got a new error. So staff is recommending the referral of this item because there's a 30-day public notice that has to be mailed to the school system, and it was missed by a matter of days. It is a staff mistake. We've talked to the applicant and they are okay with holding the public hearing on April 25th. It does not set back their timeline. They said as long as it keeps moving through the process at that point that they're okay with it. Um, so we ask that you recommend or that you vote to defer to the April 25th meeting. Will that apply to all items? Yes. Seven, eight, eight, nine. Okay. Motion to defer. Uh, I haven't closed the public hearing. I have a person that wants to speak, and that is uh, John Williams, Jr. You have two minutes, sir. This echo's getting me back here. <clears throat> um, it's a nice echo, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah, it's real good. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the only thing I want to say about this piece of property, you talk about how unique it is. Um, I know a lot about it because I grew up on it. And despite what you may have said about that it was given to somebody, it was taken from me, but there's nothing I can do about that. Uh, whether it goes into the city or not, at this point, I'm not sure I can make it. I'm gonna be a politician, I'm gonna sit on the fence on that as well. Because I've talked to the county engineers, I've talked to your city engineers. She assures me that there's all kinds of codes to stop from having certain types of dwellings put on the hillside. Uh, to be quite honest, I'm vengeful enough about it. I, I'd almost say, yeah, go ahead and put it in the city and, and just fill it as full of, of houses as you can because you're gonna have to dig into that hillside. The only place that there was a house mm -hmm. on that hillside, Jones Company ran through it and tore it down. My mm -hmm. great grandfather chiseled out the rock for his house, mm -hmm. took it down and then built that place for the tenant workers. So you chisel into it, and I, I'm watching to see if your water storage tank and your communications tower, and hopefully Kulo's house will come down with it. <laughs> uh, that man, <clears throat> you wanna talk about the lack of respect? That man came in and bought up the land from Monsanto, which Monsanto bought it from my, mm -hmm. my ancestors. He built that pond back there, and, and my father begged him not to do it. Yes, sir. And when he built it, it filled up, and then all that water went through yes, the sir. shelf, took the phosphate to my, to my pond, killed all my fish, kill, and, and yes, sir. made the water. Yes, your time's up. <laughs> we could, nobody had drinking water, so that, you know, thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else want to speak to this body? If not, I'm going to declare the public hearing closed. Entertain a motion to defer to April 25th, 2023. So moved. Second. Second by Alderman uh, Berger. Any discussion? Ready yes, to vote? I have a question. Um, 
uh, that's seven acres up there, Emily, is that correct? And it is zoned, uh, to remind me again what it's zoned because it can only have one house per how many acres? Um, the zoning that is to accompany the annexation is right. to a state residential. So one per the, acre. the zoning would allow one per acre, but because it's in the HHO buffer, the minimum lot size is two acres. Okay, probably. two acres. Mm -hmm. So It's an overlay district on top of the state residential. And there would be other uh, obstacles probably to come overcome there as well. So, if, if Yeah, we, the majority of the property is actually in the HHO, okay. which is a no-touch area. Most of but it. But then the part very, the, the part most fronting Liberty is in that 500 foot buffer of the HHO where you can put a structure on a two lot acre minimum. So the majority of the property is actually covered by no touch zone in the HHO. So we would be definitely probably not get more than three houses and if, if even yeah. possibly one or two. There's also lot frontage requirements, so they have to, each lot has to have a certain amount of street frontage. So I, exactly. in the state okay. residential zoning district, that's a pretty great distance. So I would say two, maybe three, but yeah. probably two. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, ready to vote? Vice that. Mayor? Yes. Alderman Blanton? Yes. Alderman Hanson? Yes. Alderman Peterson? Yes. Alderman Berger? Yes. Alderman Brown? Yes. Alderman Potts? Yes. Alderman Baggett? Yes. Passes unanimously number seven. This is a public, I'm sorry, number eight. This is a public hearing consideration resolution 2023-04 to annex the property on Liberty Pike. I would ask for deferral till April 25th. So moved. The, Second. The public hearing is still going on. Nope. Is there anybody who wants to speak to this body? If not, I declare the public hearing closed. Entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Thank you, Alderman Berger. Seconded by Alderman Potts. Any discussion? Ready to vote? Vice Mayor? Yes. Alderman Blanton? Yes. Alderman Hanson? Yes. Alderman Peterson? Yes. Alderman Berger? Yes. Alderman Brown? Yes. Alderman Potts? Yes. Alderman Baggett? Yes. Passes unanimously. Item number nine. This is a public hearing consideration of Ordinance 2023 04, the zone 7.06 acres, the state residential. Uh, for the same property we've been discussing, I would ask for a deferral until April 25th. Does anyone want to speak to this body? Seeing no one, I declare the public hearing closed. Entertain a motion. So moved. Thank you, Alderman Brown. Is there a second? Second. second. Multiple seconds. Alderman <laughs> Blanton, I'm going to recognize you. Any other discussion? Ready to vote? Vice Mayor? Yes. Alderman Blanton? Yes. Alderman Hanson? Yes. Alderman Peterson? Yes. Alderman Berger? Yes. Alderman Brown? Yes. Alderman Potts? Yes. Alderman Baggett? Yes. Passes unanimously. Item number 10, consideration ordinance 2022-47 is amended in ordinance to rescind ordinance 2022-03 and to amend title 16, chapter 5, relative public gathering and expression events. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Thank you. <laughs> Second. <laughs> It's getting late, I see. An appropriate second by Alderman Brown. Any discussion? Ready I, to vote? I just want to say, I, I was the descending, well, it passed without me, that's fine. But I just want to go on record saying the reason why I'm not going to vote for this is because I continue to think we are allowing people to use our public square as their personal event venue without paying a fee. It has nothing to do with what they're doing. It has to do with the fact they're squatting on our public square. So I will not support it. Thank you. Vice Mayor, how do you vote? Yes. Alderman Blanton, you've already said that you vote against. Is yes that or still no? correct? Alderman Hansen? Yes. Alderman Peterson? Yes. Alderman Berger? Yes. Alderman Brown? Yes. Alderman Potts? Yes. And Alderman Baggett? Yes. Passes seven to one. Is there a motion to adjourn? Me, me, me. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> And who's made the second? Alderman Brown? Sure, Thank second. you. All in favor say aye. aye. We are adjourned. Aye.